Welcome back to a brand new episode guys. I know I haven't done one of these for a while, but I thought why not do it while we're on the island here. The solo survival challenge is over and everyone has arrived. We set up the camp yesterday, Arvo. So Brooke and I are gonna take advantage of this excellent day with the beautiful conditions. We're gonna take the sup off the drop off, see if we can catch ourselves a cray or a coral trout or something. And then I've got an absolutely incredible recipe thought up that I wanna try with you guys later today. Oh my God. Oh, this is incredible. <laughs> this is a nine and a half out of 10 for me. It's onto the jet ski. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear it, but there are so many birds up here nesting in these trees. This island is a main location for them. And what happens is you see a lot of these birds just drop dead out of the trees from exhaustion. So they fly around all day building nests eating little bits of fish and things on the surface of the water, just going nuts. And then you walk through this track and you see thousands of them up in the trees. But I'll take you through the track, it's really epic. And we'll go to the other side, send it off the drop off, try and get ourselves some lunch. All right, this is the bit where you get pooed on. Whoa, there's so many of them. Look at them all. Whoa. All right, we've actually um, assessed the situation and the weather's so good that a few of us are gonna go out for a spear. So the boys are gonna take the yaks and the girls are gonna go on the sups. And we're gonna head out to this drift line that apparently has big mackerel. There's heaps of trout, big black spot tuskies, all sorts of like great eating fish. So it's a bit of a charge out there. We'll just fully gear up, whack the stuff in these Hobie yaks and then um, paddle out to that drift and just do a few few runs through there. All right, mask in. Fins, mask, gun, yak is set. Water is absolutely nuts. I'm excited to actually dive with the crew. It's a bit safer and I can go out a bit further now than when I was by myself, so it should be good. Do this. Paddling with the legs. Here's my steering. Left or right. You. This is our dive team today. Hi. We got Brooke, Nat, and Chris. Start getting a bit deeper. Water is just. As clean as it can be. Holy crap. Look at that. Oh, look at that bomby. This is insane. You can see fish over there. Yeah. Wow. Incredible. Oh, dying right now. I've never wanted to get in water so badly in my life. Oh, cold trout, <laughs> right under me. You see that trout? I'm seriously spotting coral trout a couple meters under my yak right now. <laughs> uh, so we just got the gun clipped to the side. The float line is just sitting in the front and we'll basically use the, the yaks as, the, as our actual float, so. We'll pop the rudder up and just drift along with that. See if we can find some, some good fish to shoot tonight's cook up. But yeah, it's all super neat and tidy. So even if I flip this thing, everything's sort of staying on board.
Oh, she was so close. Oh, oh that was close. Look at that! Oh, they're right on my tail. Yeah, they came right up. They're checking me out. Big GT. How sick. Everyone's gonna be wondering how I charge my camera gear, the fridges and all that kind of stuff when I'm doing these big trips. Welcome to Solar Land, AC200 Blue Eddy Portable Power Station. It's pretty light. And it comes with three solar panels, which are like 200 watt each. So it's insane amount of energy coming through. It takes about four hours, I think, to charge from zero to 100%. And my favorite part, wireless charging on top. You just smack your phone on there, zoom, tops it up, go for a drone flight, spot a shark, do whatever you want to do. It's so cool. I would highly recommend the Blue Eddy. God, I actually love that thing. We're heading to the spot to do the cook up. And after a crack a day, the wind's picked up and this big storm is just rolling in. So we don't know if we're gonna get smashed or not, we'll see. We've rocked up, the storm looks like it's rolling past. I've got the picnic rug set up. There's all the birds up in the tree here and there's a big old turtle down in the shallows. Hiding right now because the wind is just pumping through here but just up ahead I've spotted a female turtle laying on the beach I'm just gonna check if she's all right Do you see the turtle? what happens is around this time the males are absolutely ruthless and there'll be about like five males trying to mate with one female and sometimes they actually drown the turtles because there's so many of them climbing up on this one turtle it can't breathe and they drown so a lot of the times the females actually come out onto the sand to get away from the males because in case you didn't know male turtles can't get on the sand their fins aren't made the same way they can't actually pull themselves up so only female turtles can get up on sand so that's how they get away from the males fortunately this happened a couple days later okay we just spotted a turtle up here i think these guys were mating and old mates flipped over he's blinking he's still alive it's all right, buddy. let's go Oh, it feels so good to help that guy. I'm so glad we did this life on the island. Now he can keep mating with the female over here. He would have been a big male who sat on top, and then when the tide's gone out, he's just rolled over, and there's no way they can get themselves back over. And now we keep taking our rubbish back. Yeah, we've been collecting some rubbish along the way too. Man, that was so, so amazing to do. That is bloody awesome. Here we are, Brooke and I. We're gonna cook up this crispy chicken crimpy crumbed coral trout recipe and try and do it before the storm rolls in. Today, we're actually gonna try something that I've been wanting to do for a very long time. You all know that Brooke and I love eating just your typical panko crumbed fish. Well, instead of panko, we're gonna be cooking with chicken crimpies. We're gonna crush these up and this is gonna be our breadcrumbs. And I am dying to see 
if this tastes as good as I think it's gonna taste. We also have a bottle of rum, which is actually our oil. <laughs> it's the only spare container we could find. So we got the oil, all the ingredients, the fish is cut up in this bag. It's just coral trout. From our dive this morning, when the weather was good. No. It's going absolutely nuts. So we're gonna whip it up quickly, cook it up, see what it tastes like. And then, um, yeah, we'll give it the little review at the end. See, see if we'll do it again. For those of you who don't know me, I am a fiend for the chicken crimpy. It's one of the most beautiful things man has ever created. Man or woman, who knows? Dude, get it back. I thought you were gonna eat it. <laughs> All right, we're battling the wind here, guys. First day, the island's kind of turned to, to hell, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna put maybe half of the Half of the crimson there. We can always add more. So we'll just start with that. These are our fish bags, so it's the smallest um, thing we had, but basically, just wanna crunch them up. Oh, it hurts to do this. This feels wrong. Oh my God. So we're gonna break these up nice and fine. Wow, this video looks really weird without context. <laughs> We're basically trying to get this to the finest powder we can, guys, just so it sticks properly. That's looking pretty good. I think that's good enough. I think that's perfect, shall we? We've got the fine, crimpy powder at the back here. So the crimpy's in. We're gonna crack a couple of eggs into the thing here. <laughs> Is this a rock? <laughs> Is this a prank? I'll come back to that guy. All right. <laughs> Did it spill on my head? <laughs> ah, lucky last. <laughs> All right. The eggs are in. Oh, that's what we forgot to pack. A spoon. <laughs> I mean, a fork. <laughs> Dude, this cook up is. Stop laughing. This can't be right. It's working though. Okay, just a bit of flour. Awesome. You know the drill. The fish goes in the flour, that sticks. Then it goes in the egg to make the crumb stick. Then into the wok, fry it up. Just like that. <laughs> we got a bit of an audience. Oh. It's all right, just don't look up. Okay, the main thing I see people do and screw up this meal is they don't dust off all the excess. So mix it up in the flour, but make sure you dust it all off and especially with the egg too. When it goes in the egg, give it a mix, quick mix. Then drain that excess egg. Make sure it's all off because then it gets clumpy and soggy and just horrible. So really shake it and then boom, into the crimps. Quick mix. Oh my gosh. There we have it. It looks like a chicken nugget. <laughs> it looks like a Imagine that. We just finished it. It's like, oh my god. <laughs> We've cracked the code. Wow. <laughs> Get a close up of that. And the little ant next to it. <laughs> Alrighty. Last of the fish. Look at that. We have a nice little pile here. Crimpy crumbed trout. This is a five star eating fish and a ten star eating biscuit. I have a new bottle that holds the metho. Watch this. You just twist the top, and then now, I can just squirt it straight in like that. Instead of having to pour the whole bottle and spill it, it just, look at that. So it holds, and then. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> the wok is filthy. Basically like your thinner powder, but then it's got the chunks, like the corners of the crimps, which just to me looks awesome. So it's kind of like got the same texture as panko, I reckon, with these chunky bits. I think this is going to work absolutely perfectly. I think it's going to taste like chickeny, like <laughs> <laughs> Really? <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> nah, I know what you mean. Like, do like, you... I think that it's, 
gonna taste like it's gonna have the chicken flavor, which is gonna be so weird with fish, hey? Well, I don't think so because I think it's like chicken salt. So you know chicken, oh, that, that's it. it. Like chicken salt. I yeah. think it's gonna be like normal, like crumbed fish, but it's just gonna have like a chicken salt flavoring. That's, that's literally what I think. Okay, a little bit of Bundy in. Satisfying putting oil into a hot wok. Literally have a bunch of these birds sitting right above us. I forgot the name of the birds. I think they're naughty. Naughty. Naughty? Yeah. Naughty birds. Okay, so we have a bunch of these naughty birds up here. But at the moment, they're all just nesting above us. Like I could, they're right there. It's really cool to see them come into their nests, chill out for a bit and then fly off. It's, it's really cool. Enough talking about birds. I think, I think it's ready. Like, I, I, I want this to be perfect. I'm just going to give it another 30 seconds and then I think we'll be on. I have been waiting for this moment for what feels like my entire life. Okay, crimpy crumbed coral trout going in. Oh. Wow. We'll probably do two batches. This would be first batch. And I'm not gonna put too much in because it'll bring the temp of the oil down a bit. Oh, it's golding. Look at the golden color. Dude. <laughs> this doesn't need long either. This could be the next best thing. I may never buy bread panko crumbs again. Crumbs, yeah. Or panko. Although my bank account probably won't like it. Yeah. <laughs> Chicken crimpies are not cheap. Oh my gosh. Okay. Have a look at this, get in, have a look at this. Are you absolutely kidding me right now? Oh my gosh. Do we just cook them all or do we have a taste? Actually no, the things, I'll put these in and then we'll taste. Okay. We'll do QP after, we're just gonna try it by itself first. All right, three, two, one. Cheers. It's good. What do you think? I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. You can taste it. You can. It, yeah. I really like that. I really like that. No, that bite, I'm getting full crimpy flavor right now. Really? Like full chicken crimpy flavor. Uh, we're just gonna crack a bit of salt. Yeah, we did not need salt. Let's put a bit of pepper, a bit of QP, give it a whirl. I love pepper. I don't. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. <laughs> It's something different, but it's good. It is. It's just thicker than breadcrumbs. Mm. Like, you, you're tasting like a bit more of the crumb than usual. Yeah. Which I think some people might not like because it's like overpowering just the fish itself. Like, a, like most people would say, oh, it's coral trout. You don't need to like do anything crazy with it. <laughs> you're getting too... You're getting like chicken crimpy, biscuity taste as well as fish. But it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's the what's the final rating? What do you give it? Like eight out of ten. An eight. Mm, what do you give it? <laughs> no, dude, this is incredible. <laughs> this is this is a nine and a half out of ten for me. Highly recommend you just try it yourself because I, I just don't have the words to describe it. Like you really got to eat it like yourself. It tastes like I've just been eating the biscuits. Like the aftertaste is like biscuity. Yeah, like it's there, but it's not like a, it's not strong. But but I guess what I want to say is it can't replace panko or breadcrumbs. But like, it's good. But it's it's, it's incredible, good. and I and we will do it again. We just it won't be the new. New breadcrumbs, that's it's what too I'm trying to say. Anyway. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs>